The Buffalo Bills lose their first game of the 2023 season in very dramatic fashion. We're going to talk about the game today on The Wandering Buffalo. You are now listening to The Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia. That one was brutal. My name is Justin. Thank you for joining me on tonight's episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show brought to you by the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. Week one is in the books, and the Bills dropped an awfully bad stinker to the Jets, um, losing in horribly dramatic fashion um, in overtime, and just a lot of things that added up into this game about just not sitting right with me. You know, it's a it's a couple NFL teams going at it. You're not going to win every game. I get all that. It's week one, all that. Um, but there's just so many circumstances in this game that it just felt like it never needed to happen. Just felt like it shouldn't happen. Um, and I'm just going to kind of start out right at the top. You know, we always start out, start with Josh Allen when he does good. You got to start with Josh Allen tonight. Um you know, I know there's 22 guys on the field at a time. Uh, I, I know it's not a one person, you know, one person game. Not one person wins or loses a game. Um, I have to rest this game solely on the shoulders of Josh Allen at a certain point. Um, there are some things that I liked early in the game. Um, not so much, you know, the first quarter. It was kind of as we were moving towards halftime. Um it seemed like the offense was kind of getting their feet under them at first. And then, you know, getting towards halftime, it it felt like there was some rhythm being established. There was, um, there's a lot of, you know, little swing passes, stuff near the line of scrimmage. Um, Diggs was involved, um, who had a great game for what it's worth. Um, it was a lot of stuff near the line of scrimmage, but the ball was moving. Josh was taking the profits and being patient and then we've kind of seen this throughout the last few years of when teams are running this cover two shell on him and asking him to stay patient to beat them uh, he's shown that he can do it Um, he's beat teams you know being patient taking the profits but every once in a while it seems like you know in a game like this He's taking the profits and then at some point he just stops being patient and it's this, you know, going for the home run ball. And on this one, uh, it started with the the first interception, um, which that one I'm not too upset about. It's, you know, it was third and long. You were probably about to punt anyways. They get it. The Jets get it inside their own five. Um, but what I don't like about that is sometimes when Josh starts making the mistakes, he like gets in his own head and, and allows them to compound. Um, so I, I thought kind of before the interception, he was having a a pretty decent day and then everything just snowballed and it kept getting worse and it kept getting worse. And then he, you know, ends up with the three interceptions um, two of them forced into triple coverage. Um, there was a fumble that he lost, you know, bobbling a snap, and then he gets it back and just tries to run straight ahead. It, it just seems like he needs to take a breath. He needs somebody to get him out of his own head. And, you know, he ends the day with four turnovers. Um, could have easily been a fifth on on the play where he kind of runs into the backside of his own guys and the ball comes out, but the, the ref blows it dead on forward progress. If that ref lets that play go for, you know, another half second, uh, that was very, could have very easily been a fumble and the jets picked that up and took it back for a touchdown. Um, so there's, there's a lot that I have to put on Josh Allen in this game. And part of me is here wondering, 
you know, what does that game look like if if Aaron Rodgers didn't get hurt in the first series? Um, like, I think the Bills in the past have done a little bit of like adjusting and playing to the competition. Um, and I think we've seen moments where Josh and the offense uh, work better under pressure. Um, we saw it in the fourth quarter. You know, the offense had just given up all the momentum on turnovers. There was no rhythm going on. And then, you know, back to the wall. I think there was a, a minute and 48 seconds left. Need at least a field goal to to go to overtime. And they took it right down the field. Um, even overcame an, a, a bullshit offensive pass interference for what it's worth. I mean, that you see that play happen constantly and you know that that's just two dudes battling for position and i i don't know <laughs> whatever um uh, but they're so they're able to go straight down the field to force overtime and then of all the sequences in the game this one is my least favorite you get to overtime uh Tyler Bass, you know, doinks you one in. You're, you've just had your heart attack, you know. <laughs> we made it to overtime. Everything's going in your direction. You win the toss. You got a chance to put it. To, you just had all this momentum going to get you to overtime. You get the ball. And you just put it in the end zone. Put the kids to bed. It's over. And it just, this overtime sequence was just just nonsense to me i mean you started out with a penalty okay and then second down you're gonna or i'm sorry you're gonna you're gonna follow it up with the draw play looking like some you know 2007 2007 buffalo bills like, ah, we can't throw that far anyways. Let's just, you know, run the ball and do we'll do a draw play and maybe we'll spring it, but it never works. And uh, we'll pence and get out of here. Uh, two incompletions on that drive. And just like after everything that you just did, I'm I'm texting my brothers like maybe we should use some more tempo more often. You know, I know it's a two minute drill, you know, no timeouts there it's a chess game the defense is trying to you know allow you to get some stuff keep the clock running i understand that um but the, the offense just came alive and was clicking and then you you have one coin toss and a kickoff later and it's just this vanilla non-functioning offense again i feel like i dislike that series just as much as i like the ensuing play of the, the Sam Martin punt return for a touchdown, you know, not even making their offense touch the field. Uh, as the punt was in the air, I'm kind of watching and I'm like, oh, there's nobody really getting near him on, on the coverage. And then it ends up taking it back to the house. I mean, there's a lot of talk going on out there about you know, the obvious mistripping penalty. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, that, that calls it back the penalty from, I think that happened somewhere around like the 20. Um, you kind of slap the penalty yardage on that and they're probably still set up for pretty easy field goal to, to win the game. Anyways, we had our chance. Um, this is, there's some, some calls i uh, uh, the steph Diggs one um the tripping penalty there's some calls i can i can throw at the refs but i i'm not gonna do that in a game like this this loss is squarely on the buffalo bills uh they had chances to to kind of put this game away uh the whole the whole offseason talk about the jets was you know th this team was knocking on the door of the playoffs and with this defense and a combination of Flacco and Mike White and uh, Zach Wilson. And now they got Aaron Rodgers and we didn't even have to see Aaron Rodgers. And uh, 
I'm concerned with what that game would have looked like had he been in there. Um, because all things equal, um, I mean, we'll get into it in the second half of the show, but all things equal, I think that game turns into an absolute massacre if Aaron Rodgers was on the other side of the ball. Uh, we're not going to be all fire and brimstone. There are some things that I liked um, that I want to talk about. Uh, obviously, got to get kind of the disasters out of the way. Um, I'm not, I'm not sky is falling, but I'm not riding as high as I as I was before the game. Um, I think it's going to be a very important week for the Bills to do some self scouting and and really take a look at what they're doing here. Um, I do want to take a quick break and come back and talk about some of the things that I did like this week. Um, so stick around. Hey, this is Brother Bill. Now back to the show. Bill's Mafia, welcome back in and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. I said I wanted to take a break and talk about some of the things I liked, uh, but there's a couple more things I wanted to touch on Touch on on, on the negative side. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, I think that there might be a conversation this week really talking about how the offensive line struggled to keep Josh Allen clean. And I think that's fair at times. Um, there were some instances where I saw um, Spencer Brown in particular, and there was a couple plays where it was like a combination of Spencer Brown and Torrance being kind of backed right into Allen. Um, but I'm going to tell you the five sacks that Josh took today. Uh, I can't put all those on the offensive line. And I think two or three of those were just kind of Josh getting into hero ball mode and not trusting the pocket. Um, it, it seems like I don't like two or three of those sacks for him just trying to break the pocket and it still looks pretty clean and just going straight up the middle and instead of the defender having to come up field he just kind of sheds to to the hole and takes a sack um it's something that i have a hard time assessing this often um because that goes into kind of the bucket of what Josh Allen does that that makes him so special, right? There, there's the plays where he bails on the pocket and makes amazing things happen, and it's crazy. Um, but this this game, it looked to me like he got to a certain point of not trusting the offensive line and just kind of getting himself out of the pocket and trying to take care of himself or something. Um, so I think that was a big issue. Um, Ken Dorsey, I, I feel like, like I said, early in the game, there was a lot of stuff at the line of scrimmage. And I feel like the ball was being moved. Um, but as we got into this later on in the game, we're, we're pushing the ball down the field more. I'm still, this is something I'll have to rewatch the game on to, to see you know how much of it there is and and it's it's hard on the first watch on the broadcast uh, but i'm seeing a lot of a lot of plays where two players routes are kind of ending in this in the same like frame on tv um like the, they're kind of running to the same spot and we, we talked about that a lot last year of just kind of making it easier for the defense that you're not putting them in conflict. They just kind of have to, you know, you got that guy and I got this guy and they're the same area. So let's just stay together instead of, you know, some crossers or, you know, just, just some moves between the wide receivers that make the, the secondary have to think about which guy they're following. And that half second, you know, little thought about it is what can spring receivers open. Um, I don't know. A lot going on there. Uh, I do want to talk about the defensive side of the ball a little bit. I thought overall it was a pretty solid day for the defense. Um, 
you know, giving up, I mean, we'll call it 22 total points, but giving up 16 points in the game and, you know, something that really have to take into consideration here yes it was jack zach wilson um we all know he's not very good but i mean you're also talking about a whole four extra possessions given to them from turnovers i think uh i think the commentators said at some point that they like had 16 points and 13 of them came off of turnovers well yeah that's why I'd Turnovers are probably the biggest deciding factor uh, of wins and losses. I mean, if you lose a turnover battle, you know, two to one, you can survive that pretty easily. Um, I mean, you're talking even the worst teams in the NFL. You're giving them a, a whole four extra possessions to to score some points on you. They're professional athletes on the other side, too. You can only keep them at bay for so long. And even at that they the only only touchdown they allow goes to Garrett Wilson uh Trey White had perfect coverage on the play I, I don't really expect him to do much more there uh and Garrett Wilson reaches out tips it up to himself catches it one-handed falling to the ground I mean that that's a ridiculous play those those happen in the NFL um Outside of that, you kept him out of the end zone. That's with this offense that we're supposed to have, this offense that we do have that didn't do it today. That should be all you have to ask for from your defense. And I thought they did it. Now, it wasn't flawless. Um, I mean, at one point, Brees Hall had two carries for 109 yards. That's not ideal. Um, he ends up with. 10 carries for 127 yards. So it's an improvement there. <laughs> and he had eight more carries for 19 yards. That's cool. Um, Delvin Cook didn't really do anything. Um, held Zach Wilson to 140 yards, a touchdown to interception on 14 completions, 21 attempts. I mean, that's that's not a terrible day in, in the NFL for, for the secondary there. Um, yeah, the the running game. I mean, this is something that I'm kind of expecting to see throughout the season, um, in particular with with the question marks at um, the middle linebacker. I mean, Terrell Bernard's first starting action of the year. He didn't get any preseason reps. Um, you know, he's responsible for aligning the defense. You know, you you call it wrong and a gap's not covered and. A little crease is all it takes for these NFL linebackers to break one open. Um, so I expect to see a 40, 50, 60 yard bust run busted on us once in a while. And honestly, as frustrating as it is to watch, I can live with those occasionally. Um, if it means that our secondary is, you know, shutting down the pass. Um, our defensive line today was uh, one of the keys that I had for this game and I thought we had a good performance from the defensive line um, especially you know we're still without Von Miller I thought Leonard Floyd filled in admirably for his first game with the Bills uh, came away with the sack uh, Jordan Phillips had a sack in there uh, and Matt Milano was buzzing all over the field I know that's into linebackers but I'm going to lump him in here um just seems like the Bills were pretty active in the backfield, and that's that's something that I wanted to see. Oh, Greg Rousseau was all over the place early and often. Uh, he was great in run support, um, and I feel like his pressure in a game like that isn't always going to show up on paper very much. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, but yeah, the... I think the Bills had three sacks, eight quarterback hits, something like that. But the pressures were there all day. And that was really encouraging to see. Uh, again, this is one I'm not, it's week one. I'm not going to, you know, just have supreme confidence that everything's taken care of there. Um, you are playing against 
you know, a Jets offensive line that I've talked about being suspect. Um, you got aging player there. You got a couple guys coming back from season ending injuries. You got Mackay Becton, who has been back and forth with injuries and up and down inconsistency in his career. Um, so I'm not going to read too much into it right now. Um, but I thought it was an encouraging game for the defensive line. Um, but yeah, overall, just a very frustrating game. Uh, I thought Tyler Bass was uh, thought Taylor Bass was uh, a nice small bright side in the game. Um, perfect on field goals when he was called upon three for three. Um, I liked some of the the mix with the run game. Um, James Cook getting involved in the passing game. I think that could uh, be a real weapon used in this passing offense. And modest production for the tight ends today. I think between the two of them, like 50 yards. Um, but it was nice to see kind of the... Be able to see how they can kind of coexist with each other and um, create opportunities for each other. Um, in the limited action I've gotten with Dalton Kincaid, um, first regular season game, uh, I'm very encouraged and excited for him. Um, showed very sure hands, four catches on four uh, targets. And... You know, for all the talk of him kind of being like big slot, you know, think of him more of a slot receiver than a tight end. Uh, when he was running with the ball in his hands, he sure as hell looked more like a tight end than a wide receiver to me. Uh, he was putting his shoulder through people and, you know, not going down on first contact, uh, making sure he's delivering the punishment. And so I love to see that to to uh, finish off a, a run. Uh, but that's going to do it for this week. Uh, hopefully, you know, the Bills bounce back and have a better performance next week um, going against the Raiders. Um, ton to work on this week. Ton to go back to the drawing board on. And I will be interested to see, you know, what, what team comes out of the tunnel next week. Is this, you know, something that they can move move beyond pretty quickly? Because look, the, t the talent's on this roster, and as it stands with the NFL right now, <laughs> all the hype that we were upset about in the offseason, all the hype about, you know, the the Bills are, you know, no longer the team to beat in the AFC East. And, you know, we are sick of them crowning the Jets. We are sick of them crowning the Dolphins. Well, the Dolphins and the Jets just took care of business. Um, the Dolphins did it in a dramatic high scoring, you know, affair with the Chargers. Their quarterback throwing for 465 yards, you know. Um, the Jets came in and their whole hype the offseason was, you know, taking this good base team that they have and adding Aaron Rodgers to it. And that team is going to unseat the Bills and the AFC East. Well, that team came in without Aaron Rodgers and knocked off the Buffalo Bills. So, I mean, where it stands right now, the media is going to be all over this game because this one little sample size, first week of the season where all kinds of weird stuff happens, uh, is going to confirm everything that they've said all off season that we got mad about. Uh, so it's up to the Bills to answer right now. Um, like I said earlier in the episode, it was a dramatic, disgusting, terrible game to watch and terrible way to lose. But it is week one. Um, we see all kinds of weird stuff happen every year in week one. Uh, you know, the <laughs> excuse me, we had the the Chiefs losing. We had. Uh, the Bengals losing to the Browns, you know, getting absolutely torched by the Browns. Um, Joe Burrow, not looking good. I, I was talking to my brothers before the game and like, uh, I wonder what Bill's Mafia is going to look like if Josh Allen, you know, started the season with a stinker like Burrow did. 
Well, <laughs> we're going to find out this week because sure did happen. Um, yeah, week one is a you know crazy week in the NFL. It's always filled with with weird games and blowouts and unexpected victors. Um, but like I said, a, as of right now, th- that game went very much for the Jets are coming in with you know the pressure and something to prove, and I feel like that one game is enough to move that pressure to the Bills. Um, the Jets put some stuff on tape that the rest of the division can look at and, you know, find a way to frustrate Allen, dare him to, to stay patient. And um, that's going to be the film that teams look at when they're coming up on the Bills of well, what did the Jets do to, you know, really make Allen have such a bad day? Because don't don't get me twisted. He he is still one of the best quarterbacks in the league, you know, top top two, top three. <coughs> but the Jets have found a recipe to really frustrate him and really get him to to start pressing and you know stop taking profits and there's there's a book being written there right now this is you know going back to last year this is the the third game where they've really been able to frustrate Josh Allen and and lull him to sleep into some mistakes. I don't know, lull him into um, forcing it. So two losses and one win for the Bills in those meetings with the Jets, and there's something to what they're doing there. So other teams are going to look at it. Uh, But we are going to get out of here. Thank you for joining me on this episode this week. Um, If you have made it this far, if you listen to us at all, um, do ask that you like, share, subscribe. Uh, I know everybody says it every week, um, but it really does help us continue doing what we're doing here. Um, really kind of get the word out, um, build the fan base here. Um, thank you to everybody involved with the Buffalo fan base. Um, just great group of people um, putting out great shows. If you've been listening to this show, make sure you swing on over there, check out some of the other great shows on the network. Um, like I said, great people. Um, but that's going to do it tonight. Thank you again for joining me and go Bills. Go Bills.